Hey guys, Matt from Eastwood. We're here in my home garage and today we're going to do some basic dent or damage repair on this old fender I have here. Now if you have a body panel that is very expensive to replace or they just don't make it, sometimes you have to take on projects with damage like this and try and make them better and actually use them in your restoration or your project. Now I'm going to show you today how you can solve or repair this damage in just a handful of quick steps using only hand tools and get it to the point where you're basically ready to just do a skim coat of body filler and put it back on the vehicle. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys just the extent of the damage here, number one. Um, you can see with the straight edge here, we got a pretty, pretty deep dent in here. And one of the big things is there's a big ridge, so you know, there's always a cause and reaction when you have a damage like this. So if you read the panel before you even start hammering on it, you can kind of figure out what's going on or what happened here. And we can see when it hit somewhere in here, looks to be like the deepest area. Uh, it pushed something over when it pulled everything in, it also pushed over there. And you have a high spot here and everything's really low in there and we have a you know pretty big dip. So you wanna take note of that and kind of see where all the damage is and where, you know, if there's any heavy creases or spots like that, you can tell. Usually if there's paint loss or cracking, that's where a lot of that damage, the, you know, the worst of part of it is. Now the other thing you wanna do is take some sort of radius gauge. You can either use an adjustable um, radius gauge or you can just use one that has pre-made radi radius in it. And you wanna check and see what the actual part is before you start hammering. So if there's a good area just adjacent to where the damage is, you can check and see what it's supposed to be so that we know when we start working this, what we want it to be. So side to side, I have a good, uh, this number 12 here is about what the size is. So when we start raising this up, we don't wanna go too far. So I wanna make sure that I have about a 12 all the way through here. So I'm gonna start by uh, working the damage out using a uh, hammer and dolly. You can sometimes when the damage is this bad, you can actually just start by taking a dolly, as crazy as it sounds, a dolly or even a, a plastic hammer. I'm just beating up on the panel like this a little bit just to work the real bad damage out. Now you don't do that on every panel, but on the ones like this where it's like really bad or even worse, sometimes you just need to get it going in the right direction and you just, you know, push on it or hammer on it with the, with the dolly with your hand and you can get it to move. Um, now if you're not quite sure or you're not confident with that, you know, knowing what you need to do, then what you need to do is work your way around the outside of the dent and, and, and in. So we're going to be pushing off dolly. So we're going to be pushing up on the panel in the center with the dolly and we're going to be tapping around the outside edge on these creases especially as we push up and that's going to help us slowly work the dent out. Like I said, we could definitely take this to really quickly get the damage out and you could just start tapping up like that um, and that's a quicker method once you get a little more um, experience with it, but we're going to start by as we push up and hammer around this, we're going to see it start to slowly come up. I have to kind of put my body weight on it because I don't have a helper. And it's starting to push that up just a, just a little bit as we go. So again, you can take this just to get you close so you can see how quick, just tapping it up like that, start working it out. That's just to get the really heavy low spot out. It's just a quick way to do it um, because I would, the force it would take the hammer on this and push up to flop them uh, to get this to push down and the center to pop up uh, might be more than you can do by yourself. So you can just put quickly. And you can see it's already popping out over here in reverse. The, the, the paddle is going to have a memory to it. So if you hit it, it'll start to, to do that. So we can quickly just with a dolly in one hand like you saw. And you can see that the, the light damage already kind of worked itself out there and we're left with some of the worst damage here. So this is where we're gonna go and start pushing up and tapping on that ridge. And 
and I'm pushing in the center of the damage as I tap around the outside edge and it's slowly bringing it up and see get a little close up there but we have just basically three little spots right there with major damages all right so as you can see a lot of the dent is worked out here I have my little radius gauge we're using it was a number 12 and right next to uh, remember out in the here was all damaged before and that actually just popped back where it's like almost found its shape again there's a couple little uh, waves in the panel right here there's still a little a little spot that's uh, low and a high so we'll have to address that but the major damage has just been back to has been kind of popped back to where probably the initial hit occurred right in here so but that's what we'll work next uh, around there uh, but you can see how quickly we were able to get just the areas that weren't as bad they popped right back and took back to their shape which is okay so we can quick continue to work around these areas here and keep bringing them up as we tap around on the panel. So sometimes if the metal like this is a thicker fender, this is probably uh, 18 gauge or maybe even thicker, um, you may not be able to push up hard enough without the fender or the part flopping on the bench there. If it's bolted on the car, it makes it a lot easier, but we don't always have that luxury. Um, so sometimes what you can do is actually the reverse, so you can hold the dolly on the ridge, and then we can actually tap around the center to get us exactly where uh, it, to bring it back up like we want. Alright, so as you can see, I hit, I hit some of that dent out and what I'm doing is I'm just trying to bump it up now because the panel uh, is, is just sitting on top of a fender stand, we're running into the issue where it takes a lot of force to actually push up and hammer from the top and I'm having to go back to ha flopping around and hammering from the bottom. You want to be careful when you're striking from underneath on the dent that you don't drive it really far and actually create a high spot or stretch the metal the opposite way. So same idea, I was pushing down on the panel on the high spots and I was striking in the center of the dent and as I was bumping it up each time it's, you could see it start to move up just a little bit and then I felt it actually like pop up on one of the last hits and then I stop right then and kind of look at the panel and address it from there. Don't keep striking it, trying to work it all out in one shot. Because a lot of times you'll you'll see a pop and then there's another area where you'll see a crease and you have to go back and start working that area. And, and unfortunately, not every dent is perfectly circular. Like you'll see here, we have a dent that's like a like a little uh, V shape here and we got to work that out as, as we go. Um, and you can't just go try and work it out in one shot because you'll find that you may have to chase it around depending on how the damage occurred. It may uh, have struck over here and worked its way there and then also an after effect was out here. So I just kind of work on it as you see it pop up and I stop and, and look around and check and see what's going on. Um, we could also check with our radius gauge here and we could see on either side um, it's pretty darn good. So we're, we're getting good there. It's actually pretty good here which you know we had a dent all the way out into here and really it's just right here in this area where the paint's missing that we're, we're down to, which is where the original damage probably occurred. So I can see there, um, there's some damage. So I'm gonna keep working that. Now we can start getting to the point where we can start hammering um, from the top and hold on pushing up as well because the damage is not gonna take quite as much force to reverse this last little bit of shallow, more shallow damage. Um, I was also using, uh, when I was striking from underneath, this radius hammer. 
So I was doing that because the panel has a curve, so if I would've used the flat hammer, it would actually dug in and hit on the sides and actually put marks. So we wanna use a radius hammer because we're striking from underneath. Uh, we could use it on the top as well if we wanted you to you know, have a smaller contact area when you're doing that. So little by little, we're starting to see the, uh, the, the uh, dents start to work itself out and you can see them actually hammering like when I'm doing a glancing hit because I'm trying to kind of push these high spots as I'm pushing up and it's just uh, uh, how it works for me pretty well is, is doing that. So I kind of do a glancing hit but I feel where the low spot is and we push up on it and I'm kind of holding the dolly because the way this dent is, it's like that, so I'm trying to hold the dolly underneath, pushing up at those low spots as I go. And I may turn it and put it in the radius if I go across the other direction, but we're constantly trying to push up on that dent. And if you hear ringing, stop. Don't, if you keep smashing on it, and when you hear ringing, you're actually gonna stretch the panel out, so you don't wanna do that. We're just trying to get the major damage up, so. Out here, there's a little high spot and it's low right next to it, so I'm gonna push push up right there. So my dolly is right about here in that low spot. That's Got that out, we still got a ridge in here, but it's not nearly as bad. We have just a little bit of a waviness there, but it's not bad either. Um, again, we're just trying to get the, the actual bad damage out now. All right, so after a little bit of hammering here, I wanted to do what you want to do a spot check, as we mentioned. So uh, I have my radius way back beyond the, the dent. I have my radius gauge here, and as we drag it up, we can see that you know we had that smashed in, you know, almost an inch or something, and now we just have this little area where you, you see the paint flaking off. We can see a gap opens up right in there, um, and then it kind of opens up going this direction over here, but as we drag it straight across, it starts touching right there again. We're just barely off right there. Um, there's a little low over here where it's where the dent kind of tells us because of the paint being knocked off. And then we get back to where it's pretty much touching the whole section there. So it's pretty good through there. Um, it's just, a, again, we have this little area here. We have some stuff that's out in the open that just needs to be touched up a little bit, but we're gonna, for right now, I'm gonna focus on getting this back, and once we get everything pretty good where it's just a little wavy, then we can go back and start just dressing up those areas and making it, perfecting it as we go. But we, this is still pretty bad right in these little grooves here where the actual impact uh, occurred. So now I'm using my the radius side of the of the heel dolly and pushing up in the in the um, in the damaged area and then when I start hearing it ring I know we're getting pretty close and it's touching I'm using a fairly flat hammer here so now what I'm doing is actually just bridging the gap so it's it's low in the center and touching on either side and then as I tap on it and pushing up it's going to kind of equalize all that and make it all nice and smooth again and get it all pretty level. Push up in the center. Hammering on either side of it and it slowly brings it up. So there's a little high right here, and it's a little though next to it, I could see a highlight, so I'm gonna try and push up and tap right on that little ridge there. I 
And we got a lot of the damage out. Still a little deep right in here. But this needs to be kind of equalized there. All right, so I got, I'd say 80 to 90% of the damage out. Now it's just mainly the um, little odds and ends or subtle little things, but if you use the lights to kind of look and see what's going on there, um, this area here is very, very, very close. It's got little tiny waves in it, um, but they're pretty good at this point. We could probably get a lot of that out with a slapper. Um, but what we're going to address is right in here. I don't know if you can catch it in the light, but there's like a ridge right here and it's low in the center. So we're going to do the same thing here, just much more, much lighter hits where we're going to be pushing up in the center with the dolly. I'm going to tap around the edge here. You can see where the paint's cracked a little. Uh, it's right on that ridge. So we're going to tap right around there with a high, high radius hammer right on that ridge, pushing up in the center with the dolly with the radius side of the dolly pushing up and uh, see if we can bring that, that up just a little bit. And then we can move on to some slapper work to uh, kind of smooth everything out and wash it out and see where we're at. Okay, so I flipped the, flipped the fender around. You can see we're getting pretty good as far as the texture goes. We're hitting most places and then we get down to this corner right here. I could feel there was a little whoop in the panel right there. And there's a high there and a high there. So if we bridge that gap with the dolly underneath pushing up and we kind of slap over that, we should be able to shrink those areas down with the slapping file and then it will bring that area up, it'll level everything out um, with just a handful of hits. We just gotta get a dolly that can get in there. Uh, the dolly I was using was a little large now that the radius is coming in. So I'm gonna grab the little doorknob dolly so I can push up just in that area and slap that area up even. And then this whole area here is pretty darn smooth as far as the the, uh, the damage goes. Uh, we just have to attack some stuff out here and then we're on the home stretch. I got all the major damage out of the panel and uh, now I can check our status, but it's pretty good. There's a couple little areas in here. This is just a sample fender I used. So there's some waffles and banged up sections all over the thing, but the area where we crushed it in, right in here is pretty much good, aside from just some little wobbles here and there. But uh, if we take our radius gauge, which we remember was a number 12 in here and we drag it across, it should be pretty tight through here, which it is. There's no like, big air gaps or anything like that all the way through. And if anything, I'm seeing some air gap back in here which we didn't even mess with. Uh, now up in here, the radius starts to go almost to nothing. I think it was like a 24 if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it's a 24. So we'll kind of go up through here. And there's a little, little tiny low spot there. It gets tight back where I was working in it again and it's good all through here. So uh, if anything, there's just a little bit right there, but very, very minor. But as you can see, uh, it's all back into shape considering we were dropped down almost probably like an inch or something. Uh, they was sunken in from those hits 
and uh, it looks pretty good now, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so there's our smashed in fender looking a lot better. Uh, I have probably roughly with filming and doing all our close-ups and stuff about two hours into this project to go from that smashed in section you saw that was sunken in probably like an inch at the worst spot to where we're at here where I would say it's about 90% finished. Um, to take it that extra 10% to being perfectly metal finished where it would require like zero filler at all would probably take two to three or more times as much time to get it to that point uh, just because you're chasing all those little tiny low spots. Now some people uh, may have been wondering while they're watching the video, why didn't I take all the paint off of this? Well, number one, uh, I like using, if we know we're gonna be fixing this fender, I like using the old paint that's on there that was cracked. It's kind of my guideline for the damage. It really gives you a roadmap of what happened. So the areas where it was creased and the paint was cracked, we knew that that was an area that was like pushed up into a peak and we wanted to knock that down. So by reading the old paint, you can kind of quickly rough the panel back into shape. And then if you want, you could of course sand it down. But if you just go and sand this whole entire thing down to a smooth finish, uh, right away, it's gonna be harder to read those spots and you're gonna have to use the lights and, and, and work around. It's not gonna be as obvious. So I like using the old paint. The other reason was I didn't wanna use a sander to mask anything on this. Uh, you can definitely mask some damage or you can DA sand out some imperfections. Um, to get a panel looking better. But I wanted to show exactly how everything worked with the slapping files to really show those low spots and show you what everything does. Now, now that it's at this point, we could certainly take the fender down to a bare metal finish and we could work on other spots and it would be no problem at all. But I wanted to show this. Now the third reason is if you were using something that maybe was like original paint, you were trying to just like save the paint except for maybe some little damaged areas, you could certainly do that. I mean, we, we only damaged or lost paint right in this little area here and here were the worst of the damage is. So we could definitely spot in some paint there uh, or depending on the car, you may just leave it alone. Uh, with the patina thing and originality being so important these days, trying to leave as much original paint on, uh, not that you would do that with this fender, but in some circumstances you may want to do that and only have to spot in just some little tiny areas instead of a whole entire fender that you have to match to the rest of the car. So uh, hopefully you guys got some tips from this. If you want to learn more about the tools that you saw in this video, you can click the link down below or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right. Thanks guys. Catch you later.